please ask yourself, where are we? Are we a significant part of this planet? Do we own it? Is this only our home? Where are we? Can you see us on this photo? Our planet? Probably no. We are quite small part of the universe. Do you maybe know how long we have been here? In the movie Cosmos, they presented all the time, from Big Bang till now. Cosmic year. Months presents billions of years. And we, humans, we exist in last hour of this year. One hour of the whole year. That's not a long period, I would say. And our history, the whole history, written, remembered, the whole history of humans exists in 14 seconds of this year. 14 seconds. For these 14 seconds, we made lots of things. Unfortunately, this is consequence. We made more and more energy. We need more and more plastic, so we have plastic all around us. Unfortunately, in the ocean, too. This affects all, all living creatures, not only us. All living creatures suffer. Maybe one day, my children will ask me if I was standing in a line and waiting for a new smartphone while these things were happening to our planet. I really don't want that. That's why today I would like to talk about my life, my life with bees, about my grandpa and things which I learned from bees. As you can see, my grandpa is beekeeper. He's beekeeper for years, so I was learning about bees from him and his books. We are visiting his bees really often during summer because our far away bees are far away from him in mountains during summer, and he's worrying about bees because he has special connection with the bees. He loves his bees in the same way like you love your dog or like you love your cat, or even like mother loves her child. And all beekeepers have special connection with the bees because they are aware that bees are really important for us, and we should be aware of that also. As I mentioned. Bees are really important for us. Did you know that one-third of our food is pollinated by bees? One-third. So without bees, we will not have strawberries, almond, we will not have apples. Without bees, we will not have food at all. Unfortunately, there is a trend of decreasing bees colony in the world. In America, in the last three years, died almost half of their bees. In Germany, last winters were terrible for bees. In some part of China, bees extinct. There, people have to pollinate food by hand. Can you even imagine that? People are pollinating food by hand. Look at this. They are doing this because they have to do this. They don't have bees there anymore. Einstein once told, if bees die, people can live only for four years on this planet. Four years. We can live here for four years without bees. First step in solving problem is to be aware. That's why I'm talking today about this. I want to make you aware. I want for all of you to be aware of the problem. Bees need our support to survive. We should help them to survive. And it's not about bees, it's about us. They need our support and we need them. I will also talk about th things which can we learn from bees. Th that small, tiny bee, worker bee, is working whole life. And during entire lifetime, they collect less than a teaspoon of honey. For one kilo of honey, they have to visit more than a four million of lovers. And that's the way that magic happens, pollination. 
We should be hard worker, hard worker like a bee. They're also pollinating really worth crops, more than 12 billion directly dependent crops, 12 billion dollars worth crops, and more than a six, six billion dollars worth indirectly dependent crop. And what? They're doing it for free for us. They're really generous. And we should be generous like bees also. They are really, really special living creatures. They are so clever that they are even having a special communication system. There is no any other animal with a similar communication system. They are communicating with some kind of body language, with a dance, and they are having their own nectar source. So one bee flying finds some uh, nectar source, and if its nectar source is really poor, she will just leave it, and she will not dance and direct hive mates to that nectar source, because she's clever, and she will know that that source is not good. Instead of that, she will look at other bees and their dance, and try to find other source, nectar source, which is better, and go there. We can be clever, we should be clever, and we should be clever as a bee. Look at this. This is my grandpa with one open beehive. Really small wooden box, but here you can find more than 50,000 bees in one colony. 50,000. Can you even imagine how many small bees is in one wooden box? And they are organized. They are really organized. They have different roles with different skills. For example, when they're really young, they are nurse. So they are nurse in, in their colony. After that, they're in charge for forming honeycombs. You know, their perfect hexagonal shapes, they are mating it. And at the end, they become foragers. Believe it or not, they're having community and they are organized. We can be organized also. We should learn from them and be organized like a bee. Look at this small creature. It's so nice, but they are experts in working together. Even if they are so small, they are working together in achieving goals to positively impact common good. We should learn that. We should work together also as a team. Work together for common good. This is me. <laughs> I want to call all of you to slow down. Maybe leave your mobile phone also and go to nature. Be there. Feel it. Watch it, listen it, find answers there, because there is nothing wrong in forest, in a huge forest for centuries, there is nothing wrong. Everything works perfectly without impact of humans. It's own, so answers are there in nature. We should live in a harmony with nature. We should live in a harmony, learn from the nature because bees are a really important part of the nature, and bees are really important for us. We should support bees to survive, because we need bees to survive. Thank you. <laughs>